Hello, and welcome to Steel Division 2, Game 6 of the Generals Tournament here. Uh, we are today on Tali and Antala, 26 Panzer, V for Victory, Cheeky versus Incha playing 26 uh, Guards Maverick. So yeah, interesting uh, matchup here. Uh, but Incha, of course, a very experienced player. I'm not quite sure about Chiki's level. I don't think he's uh, bad in any respect, but Incha definitely one of the old guard <laughs> of Steel Division Two face-off versus Gonzo and Onord and the like back in the back in the olden days, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, the divisions as well. Just to briefly talk about them, 26 guards, very powerful. Lots of CQC infantry, so it definitely has the advantage on like the yellow covers. Though 26 Panzer, it does have some tools to deal with it. Like you can get two cards of flamers and the uh, Breda Stoßtrupp to kind of make up for it. But I think I would prefer 26 just for the um, yeah the CQC potential on this map, right? Like we see Flammenwerfer is coming in here to this forest, but like they're never gonna stand a chance against the Stromovigi rocks. Flamethrowers don't manage to get in either. And it is Maverick versus V for victory now. In contrast to game one, where the um, player expected to win was playing the quote-unquote bad income in V for victory. Um, well, now we have Incha playing Maverick. I don't think I've ever seen him play anything except Maverick, <laughs> come to think of it. But Chiki better hope that his uh, A phase income lasts him all the way through that basically double amount of income here. And now... 20 mils sniper, flamethrowers force off the 20. The 20 mils here, however, do get on top of this infantry, so good one there. Uh, but he is smoking it off with his 50 mil. Some smoke did come down already. Stone piney coming in slowly in half tracks, funnily enough. I, I guess the half tracks are pretty good because you can just kind of park them back, and then the infantry won't be able to just exert influence over the flag, right? Same thing with over here. If the infantry does manage to get in here, they still have to bring up some kind of AT. To deal with half track, but yeah, so the Stomoviki rocks, they have to Machiki. They do get in. Oh, and the but the Barretta troops actually manage to <laughs> catch them out in the open and they just absolutely eviscerate them. Wow, that cover differential does a lot of work there. 50 mil mortar firing though. Stosopometer immediately pinned down. Uh, is prevented from falling or from surrendering from this pioneer fuel. As the Efto come running, pushes forward, and the Efto also gets pinned down somehow. So, Incha's push actually held back quite well. You bring in, like, one bomber, and, that, and that'd be that. Uh, 250 also... 251 also doing a good amount of uh, fire support there. ISU, though, see it sees something. And gets a kill on that uh, light tank there. The IL-2, 37 mil even coming in now, but for the half-track... I'm not too sure about that, but yeah, definitely some AA investment needed early on versus 26 guards, because we saw this in, uh, I think it was 84th that we were fighting a couple of battle battles ago. And in 84th, these IL-2 37mm with their anti-tank gun, right, and deactivate the bombs, it's, it's just a crazy unit. Really, they should, I think if the divisions deserve a nerf, which I'm not sure they do, these are probably the first units to target, these are kind of just nuts. Uh, Fokovov Bomber coming in. There is no AA. Vincha is a very good player, though. There's a Yak now coming in, and the Fokovov uh, isn't particularly well-armored in and of itself, but the Yak, of course, uh, not a great resilience. Is forced to fall back. The ZSU does come in, so early early call in there as the IL-2 comes in again for the Panzer three here. Getting a third kill here now. One of the good things about the IL-2 in comparison to, like, the Stuka is this he carries a lot of ammo. Just a ton, and the Yak-9 gets the kill on the fighter, too, so our early fighter investment, not a good idea. And uh, I've, ha I've had to slowly uh, start, instead of bringing in fighters and stuff like that, just bring in AA, right? Like, if you're not confident in your plane micro, it, it, it saves me 9 out of 10 times to just bring in AA. As now the P2 even comes in, there's still no AA. He's got to be looking for something. A 250-9 coming in now as we enter in the second tick, I think. Uh, so he's got to get plenty of opportunities for this IL-2. He's even got to go for a double run here. Ooh. Ouch. Doesn't... Barely manages to kill. It gets a good side shot on that one. Uh, now it's going to be coming back. What perfect micro from this, right? Because if you don't actually pull back like this... 
Uh, the IL-2 will be spinning around because it can't um, acquire targets very well. So Inchuk microing this IL-2 perfectly. He's certainly versed in it. Uh, P2 going a little deep. Might see like a Sagittario out or something like that. But he only brought in the Falk of Wolf Bomber in the first part. Like if he brought in the Sagittario to begin with rather than the Fighter Bomber, uh, it definitely would have gone a lot better because he would have been just able to strafe down the Yak and then that wouldn't have gone down. So Panda 3 dies. IL-2 is now falling back. Actually, the Aufklärer got spotted. Why what? What the hell? That's crazy. There's no, there's no way he spotted that, did he? I don't know, some of the infantry here, but like, an Aufklärer at that distance should have no business being spotted, even even in the open cover there. <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, ignore what I said about the half-track, I guess, because the T-34 has moved in, and now as I still being forced to the front. And, of course, the Panzer 3s are all dying. The Gula is here to exert some influence back over here. And you can, like, fire position this town. Uh, and use this position back here with, like, IG-33s and stuff like that. Or even, I like, uh, having an almost one, like, right here. Because then you get to exert influence over this area and the town at the same time. Uh, and just fire through. And if you fire through in the middle of the town, each, like, road position corresponds to a different building. And you can get a fairly good amount of damage done there. Flamer did die down here from the looks of it. Stone Pioneer, another Stone Pioneer coming in, but there's a 3-4 there. Unvetted Panzer 3Ls, though, coming in. Finally, we see some AA being invested and a pack 40 to deal with this uh, T-34. It's a 1311 for now. I wonder what flag that would be. Guard CP is going to kill Flamer here. Yeah, I don't actually see the flag that Cheeky Breaky had captured there. Maybe this one for a brief moment. Uh, but... Oh, no, it was up here. <laughs> it uh, refused to put units there. That's funny. Yeah, the, the North... Unless you've got, like, dedicated DD units. I've seen the Canadians pull this off. Or, like, second US and A phase. They just rush the units across the water. Um, but once you run out of amphibious units, there's basically no way to supply this road quickly. And it becomes just a gigantic slugfest. So you gotta put, like, long-range AA on the coast here. Uh, potentially, like, in here to even stop bombers from completely harassing. So, oftentimes, not a great uh, fight up there. P2 does get forced back by the 7-1. Another T-34 coming in for these Panzer IVs. Something pinned down the Guardia DP. It might have been a bomber or something while the flamethrower is now <gasps> rushing forward. But without a little bit more long-range firepower... The guards DP can just effectively sit back in this uh, green cover here and exert influence over that flag. Back to a 1311. Stolz coming in and a Stone Pioneer. I'm not too sure if I'm a fan of the Stone Pioneer. Panzer IV takes a hit from the little gun and goes down here. But, yeah, I guess you gotta bring something in, right? Ooh, the 7 1 goes down. What the hell? To the SU-76. Wow, already? Jeez, that is some luck. I guess uh, Cheeky Briggy didn't didn't see it coming in, and now the off-map's even got to come in. Probably going to be targeted on this area, and you've got the Aptos and stuff, and there's no, like, 2k firepower over here, really, to prevent these uh, Aptos from doing it. And really, uh, in the 2k fight, the si this side has the advantage, because you've got excellent force here for AT guns and stuff like that. And even if you don't have the AT gun, you've got a yellow cover forest. Meanwhile, your opponent is forced to either use this one, which is not great because it still gets shot by AT guns over here. Or you just sit out in the open, which is the other possibility. And now, it can be done, right? But as the, the person with the cover benefit has the like overwhelming superiority there. And it's a triple star ISU. And he somehow saw the Alpha on the open. <laughs> like, what the hell? No idea where that went down, pro but it, I don't think it was like a thousand meters in the range of anything. It maybe if it moved, and that's what spotted it, but yeah. Welcome Wolf Bomber coming in. And missing, apparently. <laughs> As the Storm of Eurox and Apto just completely eviscerated the uh, Stoßrop before the Storm Pioneer can either get in. You really do need to wait for like your units to uh, get in together. And, like, then once you've built up a forest, then push into the area where you're trying to do. But, yeah, just doing it like that. Not a big fan of it. And now Inchahir 
P-34 on the side. Panzer threes are going to be coming around, but they're, you know, they're going to have to re-aim their turrets. Meanwhile, the T-34 is moving forward. Uh, off map is going to come down in the center area. 250-1 is going to go down, but, oop, look at that. The Panzer threes once again. Boom, 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 boom. IL-2 coming in for great kills. There's no war AA again. Like, what are you, what are you going to do, right? SK-80 is coming in. We are entering into B phase, and like if he doesn't bring any AA out now, I would almost call this battle a foregone conclusion because uh, these IL-2s will just provide a constant fire. I wonder if he sees that. I guess the Snapiri sees it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to target it. But wow! So he gets that kill clean, and now the IL-2 does the weird "got to come around again" thing. This was coming in with its, with its bombs, funnily enough for this anyway, but nah, he forgot to turn off the bombs as he retargets. Bump on him. Actually, <laughs> uh, retargets again. Avoiding using that. Turns off the bombs. This time the attitude is going to come in with that. Two Gepards coming in. Uh, I'm surprised he's not like relying more on Famos here, but they are certainly an expensive option. As the attitude is going to get killed on this kill though. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And this attitude is going to be bombing the Stossel here, giving the Guards TP an opportunity to get through this forest. SK-18 desperately trying to get rid of these uh, mortars. But I think prioritizing artillery over anti aerial was is really going to be a troublesome thing for Cheeky Breaky. He's at least got another 7-1 somewhere in his deck, so... And now using it to uh, force off this unit early. Or try and prevent this gigantic push, but Aptos, Stubaviki rocks, like, together with some smoke play, maybe from these 50 mils, they're all out of ammo, as another plane goes down to the 37 mil, and probably even another one, nah, he's gonna pull those off, uh, these 50 mils are gonna be able to move forward and provide support while the Aptos just move forward, right, you only need to bring in a single mortar, I think even the SU-76s could do it here, um, and, yeah, a little bit of smoke, would completely destroy these as these Aptos move forward. Stosso Pereira coming in as a response, but you see, like, just the amount of units here um, is slowly falling in favor of Incha as he even brings in the second off map as he knows that he's going to be in position to push on this once those 40 seconds pass. Uh, artillery still firing away. The 250 is coming in for the guards' DP. <laughs> Might be a little overinvestment there. The <laughs> kept parts are actually going to be flying straight. Into the off map here. You know, you know, not what you like to see. And there's no AT besides this pack 40 to actually deal with this Panzer T 34. And the T 34 has a definite benefit of, um, like just veterancy in general. It's just pulling very well veterancy. He's brought all his units in two star, stuff like that. IS 1 Kamladi coming in now. Um, a single Panzer 3 L unvetted is not going to be able to deal with the T 34, especially like fire and APCR versus fire and AP. T-34 needs two shots, Panzer 3 needs three. If you bring in... That's why you usually bring in two Panzer 3s. You bring in a double whammer and just fire APCR off of it. But, yeah. This is CSU coming in for close support. Actually, very good unit for that close support because it does have the dual 50 kills as well as the 37mm. Uh, but in 26, you generally don't want to be using him for that unless you're really confident. Uh, but I guess he's brought it in. Might as well. And he's got it right next to the front now, so without any tanks or anything to deal with that. He's going to be able to force off tanks right at the front as well. Dual Gepards after the off map comes in. Uh, fairly well suppressed. Don't manage to get any real fire on the plane down there as the sniper now is going to get smacked <laughs> by the Stug here. Can't wait for another IL 2 to just completely ignore this Gepard and kill it because that's a fun and balanced unit. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think certain Soviet does really rely on the IL 2. But certain ones like 84th and 26th guards are almost made in, like incessantly better because their IL-2 randomly comes in double availability in A, and it's like a medium resilience plane. Who, who brings in enough AA to cover off medium resilience planes? It can be really toxic sometimes uh, if you know how to use it well. And the SK-18 is not really getting the amount of fire needed here. More Stugs coming in. Uh... They do have the 90 pen versus the 90 armor, but it's a little bit more of a toss-up, right? You do want to be relying on something a little heavier. T-34. 
doesn't spot the Panzer 3L. But the Panzer 3L is probably going to miss. Or no, it's, it's going to duel against the M42. Uh, yeah, hasn't even gotten in position now. No, that's probably going to go down. The T-34 over here also getting uh, involved. And, yeah, kaboom. Triple Storm Pioneer coming in. Trying to dislodge this. He has done, like, a good job, kind of, uh, of whittling down some of the units that are in here. Like, the Aptos are low health. Stomoviki is one of the only units left here. But Incha has kept his uh, leader alive. He's still got the IL-2 coming out here. He's going to make a gun run on those two. This one as well, probably. <laughs> they have to retarget because it was uh, done too late. This one's just kind of coming bomb. Stone Pioneer gonna go down? Apparently not. A Stone Vicky Rocks take enough damage from that Stone Slip, but it does seem now he's gonna fight against an Avto, which should be a win in a normal situation. And like, the Sagittario even pulled back the ZSU. Uh, it's a little bit too late for that, right? And just the utility out of these Stukas. Jesus Christ. Uh, the Stone Pioneers do get the benefit of it, but the SU-76 is going to suppress them all, and then that Stone Vicky Rocks has to move forward. Even like the T-34, right? There's no AT down here. <laughs> um... Though, granted, Flamers can still kill tanks, as we did see in that last battle, and now the ISU is um, unreloaded. We're going to be whacking a Panzer III with its uh, HE shells there. Combat now even coming in. So, potentially triple star things over here. I mean, it's already triple star, but I guess he's got more Stravniki, and the Stravniki are coming in at one vet. Triple vet Stravniki are something to be uh, feared, definitely. IL-2, gonna get a good bombing run on the Azad's Topen. Stavniki here, gonna be forcing him back. And he's gonna be able to exert influence over this flag. This flag's once again almost been taken. All these units are falling back, so the Stomaviki Rock's gonna have free reign. I just pit him down. Get to kill them all. That's the 1410. Uh, one more flag. Probably gonna be down here or either up here. Fogel move does manage to get a uh, good shot off. It does pin down the Storm of Vicky Rocks, but it's really a toss-up of who um, comes back first, right? <laughs> oh my god, really? That is dirty. Come on, man. Give him a little bit of a break. The Storm of Vicky actually get pinned down second. Er, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> ouch, Incha. Ouch. He probably even sees this uh, SK-18. I wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of thing coming for that. He's got points to invest in on Drusha. This is uh, falling apart. We've got two minutes left of B phase here. And two minutes left of painful, painful income. There's just, like, nothing left in the center here. The, what's it called, went down. So now you're just bringing in a couple Stravniki here, sure. Or even, like, CQC units directly into this area. Um, he's got the AT gun set up on the reinforcement road. <laughs> SKT's being countermattered by something. Doesn't even need the Andrusha, really. These little stooks coming forward, but they're just going to get plinked away. There's still the M42 here. There's the T-34 here. The C-34 is here as well. These stooks are not going to perform very well against them. Oh, no, it's a B4. B4 on counter battery at two stars. Wow. Yeah, uh, these these super heavy guns from the Russians are actually super crazy at um, counter battery. Like, I like using them in parking myself. They also come in like 3rd VDV and of course 26 guards. This one even gets like an even better one, the 280mm. But definitely a great unit for that purpose. If you, if you put an artillery leader next to it as well, like it just becomes kind of crazy how good it gets. IL-2 coming in again with its bombs. Gonna pin down some, av some uh, more stuff. Lots of snipers out in the open. He is preparing for a larger push. Stavniki gonna be able to win against the Panzer guns at close range. Wonder why the Panzer guns are even there. The, uh... Do these have 750 meter range? They do, weirdly. With their heat shell. No, not with their heat shell, with their AP. Uh, but they're... Eh. Why does the heat shell have less penetration than the AP shell? <laughs> that is such a weird thing. But it doesn't matter, the IL-2 is coming in anyway. Boom, 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 boom. Two more dead. SK-18's almost dead. The Schaffnik are coming in here. Only the... 250-1 really prevents and just complete collapse there. Um, but I would wager that that's going to go down shortly. This is going to go down shortly. This second MG slowly working its way forward. Is this gun direct fire support here on that MG. More leaders. Commander is still set up. Like, 
there's a 59. He's been able to exert influence over this flag. Half track's got to be forced to fall back and probably die to the PTRD down here eventually. After those are also in. So any CTC units there, um, except for like dedicated stone pioneers or something, are also going to be just clapped. SU-85's got to prevent this uh, 250-1 from doing anything. And I, I don't know what you're really expecting with that. Fuck a move com bomber coming in for the Schlafniki. It's still a 16-8 though. Bomb loadout does come in. And yeah, just an excellent pick apart from Incha here, quite honestly. The Stug has also been able to go down. I think it was the Andrusha. Yeah, yeah, the Andrusha fired a couple of shots here. Pretty wide dispersion, but did manage to make that fall back. Uh, and now, like, dual ISUs, he's got no way to really deal with this. Just a little bit more infantry. I think we are in phase C now. So these ICs are the last vestiges of that. Um, but, like, what are these students going to do versus an ISU? 76 coming out as well. But there's still no AA, right? And as long as there's no AA, these IL-2s have had free reign. And Drusha are going to be firing up the infantry as well. T-34 going to clear up the 250-9 down south. Karinski going to move forward while that Stug is uh, taking advantage of. He's, it's just moving back on a like, move position order, because that was the last order it got, I think, at the beginning of the game. Um, and so it's going to be even less accurate. He doesn't notice it, so props in for that, but... Yeah, boom. <laughs> After those together with the suppression of the Andrusha, close air support there. <laughs> close air support, close artillery support. Do manage to pin that down. Why are you fire positioning? <laughs> what is this? Come on, really? That is just, once again, picking up transport snipes and stuff like that into phase C, finally bringing in the Panther D. I'll clear up Panther D, but that's not going to help you now, and I'm willing to bet that the ISU, uh, <laughs> once he gets it reloaded, I guess he's got the other one coming in, we'll be able to deal with that uh, Panther D, no problem, and still no AA, 17-7, these tanks are pushing forward, single T-34 would have been able to clear that up, I wonder what happened to the IS-1, we did see it, right? And now it's nowhere to be found. Strap Niki together with Storm Vicky Rocks. Pentagon is going to pin that down. And I uh, think just has to bomb that, I guess. <laughs> Before I clear off that artillery, 250. That's a good damage on the Strap Niki, but these Strap Niki, you're still going to have to dislodge them somehow as now we enter into a triple take here with that flag going up there. P2 still. Walking around, the Shumu Viki Rocks actually got into the forest here. That's huge. Smoke coming down as well from something, from the SU-76s. And so that Pentagon's going to go down. This flag's going to switch. Uh, Stavniki firing their PTRD versus this dinky little tank. ISU slowly coming forward for that. Panther did get a kill on the ISU. And this one doesn't have any... Uh, AP left anyway, which is probably why it went down, but I expect we're going to see unmolested IL-2s coming forward any second now. As Storm Pioneer desperately come in. And you know, well, like, th the last three Storm Pioneers got killed by IL-2, so why not the next three? Uh, man, is the Storm Pioneer Rocks are actually going to get their flamethrower on the 250-9 and finish that off. The Artillerist! Jesus Christ, he's got smoke units all over here to provide enough smoke. For that ISU to get it reloaded. Alcane does manage to fire off its bombs. I think the Panther D is going to eventually see that. Maybe not quite yet. And so this flag will go back, but it's still a 59 with that because it managed to take these two flags. Uh, ouch. Yeah, so well played to Incha, I suppose, but. Commiserations to Cheeky Breaky. Uh, it's a bit hard. Particularly when you are fa facing a player of that caliber, playing actually a good division. Normally, if you see Incha in quick play, he's uh, playing something like ninth Cav nowadays. Uh, so I wouldn't feel too bad, Cheeky. Just the luck of the draw of your opponent, I guess. <laughs> As the guards DP even managed to get some damage on the SCK of Zed. And the second ISU triple star manages to delete the Panther in one shot. And now this one's even fixed up. It didn't even go down anymore. Yes, that's still coming in. 
Three minutes left on the clock here. Infantry pushing forward on all fronts. This is going to get completely cleared up. Two Panzer IVs and a Panzer III. Versus what, I guess? Artillery went down here. Artillery went down here. Yikes. Yikes. Yeah. But you can kind of see well, a well pulled together breakdown of the opponent's forces here. Like everything was well planned and well executed by Insha. Uh, it is great to see some of these uh, players play sometimes like this. Uh, just a little bit unfortunate that uh, it manifested itself into an uneven income disparity as well. So Insha not only got the benefit of the potentially the better division, but also the better income and the better side of the map. So. What happens when you stack 10 benefits on uh, the best player that's probably still active? I guess, like, Gonzo's in Strike Team fucking testing the new division, but uh, I haven't seen him in Quick Play or anything like that in quite a while. So, yeah. Well played to Incha. Two minutes left of the clock here. A 19-5, one more flag, and you just kind of rush something up here to capture this, right? Cards could move forward. This if you could move forward. Throwing it out a little bit long here. Foco Oath Bomber coming in for the T-34. <laughs> here come the double aisle twos again with the P-2s. This is just going to be rough, I think. Yeah. Double gunner on there. Bum, 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 bum. Now targeted on the Panzer IVs. Come back around again, no AA again. Two-star Panzer IVs are pretty good, but not versus IL-2s. And it's once again being counter-battery. He hasn't even reloaded the... <laughs> what is his luck with these frickin' SC-76s killing the AA? I guess the it's more the luck that he's not moving his AA, so it's kind of predictable to just artillery it. And these SC-76s, to their credit, they aim really fast, right? And you get enough of them on target. They do do good damage. The series aren't terrible. They're just bad. <laughs> yep. Another double gun run here. Doesn't quite see it, but manages to kill one Panzer IV anyway. The second uh, T-34 is not going to duel against the Panzer IV. And fall back. Still in 18.6. 50 seconds left on the clock. No way. It's hell of hope. As even that comes in. Answer for dueling versus an ISU. Actually goes down. He guards Kamali with a little bit out of position. But now he's got an AT gun here. Uh, that's going to get into this position. The SU-85 as well. He doesn't even see these, right? The Elkler came into this kind of spot for it. As the out get another kill on another Panzer IV. Jeez, the amount of damage they've done this game. And now before Karinski can go down, oh, yeah, ouch, it's another two kills, 20 to 4, a complete airborne evisceration of the enemy forces, well, thank you all for watching, game 6 here, uh, in the Generals Division, Generals League in Steel Division 2, there you go, and, uh, yeah, yeah, just massive kill disparity, income disparity, everything is disparity. Ouch. <laughs> wow. So, ICU, crazy amount of kills. IL-2, crazy amount of kills. T-34, crazy amount of kills. I don't think there's a single unit that didn't pay off. Mine is this in here. <laughs> Other IL-2 got, got its own like, ton of kills. Oh, man. Yeah, well-executed IS-1. Had to have gone down somewhere, right? It did, it did. It went down to the pack 40 so... <laughs> the only misplay in the entire game was this IS-1. Damn. Well played to Incha. Commiserations to Cheeky Breaky. And we'll see you next time for Game 7. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.